Hey guys! Today we're going to be taking a look at the line of best fit. After you watch the video today, uh, I'd like for you to be able to look at a scatter plot and estimate where the line of best fit would be and use that line of best fit to make predictions based on the data that you're given in your scatter plot. So if you haven't already watched our previous video about scatter plots, I urge you to stop this video and go back and, and watch the one that comes before it. Okay, it is important to watch these in order uh, because that uh, scatter plot video, uh, the one with the red cover, that has prerequisite knowledge that you're going to need in order to be able to understand this video. Okay, so assuming that you have already watched that video, then hopefully you remember this example, right? We looked at um, this particular example and talked about um, the, how each one of these points here on the scatter plot represent an eruption of the Old Faithful Geyser in Yellowstone National Park. And we talked about how um, in this particular scatter plot we see a positive correlation between the duration of an eruption and the waiting time between eruptions. In other words, the longer that an eruption lasts, the longer you have to wait for the next eruption to occur. Okay, and maybe you remember in that video me, you know, acknowledging that this line existed, but to but I told you just to ignore it, and that we'd learn about it later. And so it's later, and this is the line. This is what we're learning about today. Okay, this is our line of best fit. It's also called a trend line. Okay, so line of best fit and trend line. Those words are used interchangeably. And it's just a line that represents the correlation between the two variables in the scatter plot. Okay, so these little points, each point in our data series that represents an eruption, they're sort of scattered all about our, our graph here. And we use the line of best fit to sort of generalize the relationship that we're seeing right in our last video we learned that you can kind of look at the way these dots were uh, or you can kind of look at the pattern that's formed and say first of all that it's roughly at least linear that it um, is it has a positive correlation right that as our x value increases our y value increases also and this line is just um, basically a summary of that Okay, so the line of best fit, some, uh, something that uh, here are some things I'd like for you to keep in mind. Be sure to be filling these in on your notes. Okay, a line of best fit does reflect the general relationship between variables in a data set. Okay, it kind of looks at the scatter and kind of streamlines it into a more direct relationship, but it does not necessarily include every point in the set. Okay, so we're not playing connect the dots. That's not what the line of best fit is for. Okay, it's just show the general direction of, of the, the general pattern that we see in the graph, but it's not to connect all of the dots. Okay, in fact, you might have a line of best fit that doesn't include any of the points on your data set, or maybe it only includes one or two. You, know, you could have a line of best fit that included all the points on your data set, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Okay. Also, the line of best fit is useful um, in helping us to make predictions. We can take the data that we have and predict what the data might be under different circumstances. Okay, so it helps us make predictions, but it does not show us necessarily exactly what will happen. Okay, so it helps us to make reasonable predictions, but it's not um, something that gives us uh, perfectly accurate predictions every time. Right, let's take a look at, a, at an example here. Here we have a scatter plot that relates the amount of time that students spend studying to the test grade that they received. So down here along our, our x-axis, it shows us how long all these different students studied. Remember that each one of these points represents a student. Okay, so here's a student who studied for one hour and made just under a 70. And another student who studied for an hour who made, you know, sort of a mid-B. Okay, here's a student who didn't study at all, who, who made just over a 60. And there was another student who didn't study at all, who uh, cleared a 90. 
Okay, so each one of these dots represents a specific student and when we kind of stand back from our graph and look at the general direction of how our points are moving, we can uh, say that there seems to be a positive correlation here that as the students who study longer tend to make higher grades. That isn't true in every case. Look, this person who spent two and a half hours studying still scored lower than this particular student over here who didn't spend any time studying. Now this one's sort of an outlier, right? It doesn't really cohere with the rest of the items in our set. But nevertheless, it's uh, this is kind of a real world representation, right? Just because you spend two and a half hours studying, it doesn't guarantee that you'll make a specific grade. But in general, there is a positive correlation between the amount of time that students spend studying and the grades that they receive. The more time they study, in general, the higher their grades. Okay, so uh, this right here is our line of best fit. Okay, and it just sort of mimics the the trend that we see um, in our scatter plot that we learned to look for last time. Okay, so in our scatter plot, we see a, a linear positive correlation, and so our line shows a positive correlation as well. All right, so it kind of follows the the trend of our data series. Now, one thing to keep in mind about the line of best fit is that in general, you're going to have roughly the same number of points above the line as you have below the line. Okay, so you're kind of taking your data series and more or less kind of splitting it in half, with half being above it and half being below it. Okay, so in this case, we have one two, three, four, five, six points above the line of best fit, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points below the trend line. Okay, and I wasn't actually counting the points that appear to be more or less on the line. Okay, I was just counting the ones above, six above, and seven below. So that's roughly the same number. Uh, above as it is below. Okay, and that's something that we want to uh, keep in mind when we're working with the line of best fit. Okay, we can also use the line of best fit to uh, make predictions, right? Based on this particular line of best fit, we could extrapolate that a student who studies for three hours is likely to earn an A. Now, what does that mean? Well, we don't have any items in our data set uh, the, or we don't have any students, in other words, who studied for three hours. We just don't have that point in our data. There wasn't a student on this scatter plot who studied three hours. But we could still look at this line of best fit and kind of imagine extending it over here to three hours and, and make the prediction that a student, that someone that uh, studied three hours would probably score right in this range here, like a mid to high A. Now that's again that's not a guarantee, right? A student could study for three hours and still flunk the test, right? That could happen, but if according to our line of best fit, it's a it's reasonable to predict that someone who spends that much time studying would score uh, well on that on this test. All right, so. Um, our standard says that we need to be able to draw our own line of best fit and actually what we really need to do is estimate the line of best fit. So I'm going to show you a way that you can approximate the, the trend line. Now there is an actual mathematical way to calculate it. Uh, we're not going to learn it in eighth grade. I, I might show you how to do this on your graphing calculator, but that's actually a lot more complicated than what uh, the state of Texas is asking us to do, which is just to be able to look at a scatter plot and sort of eyeball the line of best fit. All right, so I'm going to show you a method for doing that. And after you get enough practice, you probably won't even have to use this method. You'll just be able to look at one and sort of uh, and, and put a good approximation down. All right, so here's our first uh, our first example here. It's a scatter plot that relates screen time in the evening to the amount of sleep that people get. All right, so this is the amount of time, um, nighttime hours that people are spending, you know, say on their computers or video games or television or cell phones or tablets or what have you. 
Um, and so we can generally see by looking at this graph that the more time that people spend on their devices or on their screens, the less sleep they're getting. All right, so this is what we call a negative correlation. As our x value is increasing, our y value is decreasing. All right, so more screen time, less sleep. How can we do a line of best fit here? Well, the first thing that I would have you do while you're learning is to kind of draw a shape that sort of encompasses or captures most of the point in your data series. Okay, so there's my shape. You might even want to take like say a highlighter or a light colored marker and just sort of make lines, uh, you know, make, kind of make some stripes just to cover most of the points in, in your series. Now you don't have to get all of them. Look, there's this one down here that just didn't fit in with the others, right? We call this an outlier and I wasn't able to capture that with my shape and that's okay, all right? But make, one that, that make a shape that catches most of your points. Then remember what we said about the trend line, that there are roughly half the points above the line and half the points below it. So once you draw your shape, go ahead and just uh, draw a line that cuts it in half, that bisects it lengthwise, okay? And that's going to give you a reasonable approximation, okay? Um, we want to verify that it's reasonable, right? And we can do that by counting our points. So you can say we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points above the line, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points below the line, right? So eight above, nine below, that's reasonable. Okay, if it turns out that I had maybe, uh, you know, 10 above and four below, then I could go back and adjust my line. But as long as there's about a half above the line and half below the line, then you know that your line is reasonable. Okay, and again, this is a method for approximation. We're just estimating. So what we're doing here is not an exact science. And so your line of best fit might vary a little bit, might be a little bit different than mine. It might be a little bit different than your neighbors, and that's okay, so long as they are uh, similar, as long as they're close, okay? So um, here's another example. We're asked here in our directions to approximate the line of best fit, and then based on our line, let's estimate the annual income of a person who has 22 years of education. Okay, so our scatter plot's about education and income. Down along the bottom, we have the years of education, and along the side here, we have our annual income in thousands. Uh, we can see a general positive correlation here. The more education a person has, the more money in general they make. Again, not true in every case. Here we have a person who um, has eight years of education who's making you know a little bit more money than this person who has 12 years of education so again with scatter plots remember this is a real world representation where um, there are outliers there are anomalies there are um, you know not everything is predicted on a can be predicted with a, a linear equation but here we go we see that we're more or less moving in a positive direction generally speaking the more education you have the more money that you, you make okay so let's use our method to draw a line of best fit there on your paper i'd like for you to go ahead and draw a shape that captures most of the points in this series okay so here's mine and then kind of find the midpoint here and find the midpoint here and just connect those dots to sort of cut your shape in half lengthwise. And then you'll want to verify that it is, uh, you know, more or less reasonable by making sure that you have about as many dots above the line as you have below. All right. So points to remember. Your trend line may or may not pass through one or more points on your scatter plot. Okay? It may pass through some, it may pass through all, it may pass through none. Okay? Also, uh, as you see in our examples, the trend line doesn't have to start at the origin. Okay? Um, in fact, in, our, in all of our examples, none of them did. All right? And just want to remind you that extrapolation means that you're going beyond the data that you're given, and so it's not always accurate. 
All right, so that does it for us today, guys. We approximated the line of best fit and used it to make predictions. Hey, don't forget to take your quiz in the upper right-hand corner and